CBS News election headquarters in New York, here again is Walter Cronkite. Ronald Reagan appears to be heading toward a landslide electoral victory tonight uh, across the United States and all sections of the country. And now another deep blow for Jimmy Carter in his native south. The CBS News can estimate that Alabama will fall to Ronald Reagan as well as Florida, which already has gone to him, a major state there, and uh, the state of Texas and the state of Oklahoma. As a matter of fact, with some 13 states now that we have been able to estimate on the basis of actual voting in precincts across the country, uh, those 13 states, Jimmy Carter has won only one state and the District of Columbia. Georgia has gone to him, his native state, and the District of Columbia. But all the other states uh, are shown in blue that Reagan has won. Now with Alabama, as you saw, just added to that number. Carter's states show in red. It means that in electoral vote, Ronald Reagan now has 177 electoral votes to uh, Jimmy Carter's 15 electoral votes. Uh, that is a, a long way toward the 270 now that Ronald Reagan needs to be declared the 40th president of the United States. Two more states in the Reagan column, according to our CBS News estimates of uh, votes actually cast in our sample precincts in those states. Missouri has gone to Ronald Reagan. Uh, that was a state that it was believed that Carter would hold this year. And New Mexico, a state which also the Reagan people had thought might go to Carter, just might go, has gone to Ronald Reagan. He's got both Missouri and New Mexico now, and, and another big one fallen to Reagan, Michigan. Michigan has gone to Reagan. Ohio and Michigan now in the Middle West, both for Reagan. It really leaves Jimmy Carter almost nowhere to go to still pick up a majority of votes tonight uh, in all sections of the country. Uh, he has lost in areas where he had to show some strength, at least to win. He's lost in the east with Pennsylvania, New Jersey, Connecticut. He's lost in the Middle West with Ohio and Michigan uh, and Pennsylvania in the east, uh, did I say? Uh, he's lost in the south with Texas, Florida, and Alabama, and the west is going to Reagan as expected. President Carter, with defeat imminent, is arriving now at Democratic campaign headquarters at the Washington Sheraton Hotel. Ladies, not only the president, but the splendid president of these United States. You. I promised you I promised you four years ago that I would never lie to you. So I can't stand here tonight and say it doesn't hurt. The people of the United States have made their choice. And of course, I accept that decision. But I have to admit, not with the same enthusiasm that I accepted the decision four years ago. <laughs> I might say, I have a deep appreciation of the system, however, that lets people make the free choice about who will lead them for the next four years. About an hour ago, I called Governor Reagan in California, and I told him that I congratulated him for a fine victory. I look forward to working closely with him during the next few weeks. We'll have a very fine transition period. I told him I wanted the best one in history. And I then sent him this telegram, and I'll read it to you. It's now apparent that the American people have chosen you that, as the next president. I congratulate you and pledge to you our fullest support and cooperation in bringing about an orderly transition of government in the weeks ahead. My best wishes are with you and your family as you undertake the responsibilities that lie before you and I signed it, Jimmy Carter.
I have been, I have been blessed as only a few people ever have to help shape the destiny of this nation. In that effort, I've had your faithful support. In some ways, I've been the most fortunate of all presidents because I've had the daily aid of a wise man and a good man at my side. In my judgment, the best vice president anybody ever had six months ago. I've not achieved all I set out to do, perhaps no one ever does, but we have faced the tough issues. We've stood for and we've fought for and we have achieved some very important goals for our country. These efforts will not end with this administration. The effort must go on, nor will the progress that we have made be lost when we leave office. The great principles that have guided this nation since its very founding, will continue to guide America through the challenges of the future. This has been a long and hard-fought campaign, as you well know, but we must now come together as a united and a unified people to solve the problems that are still before us, to meet the challenges of a new decade. And I urge all of you to join in with me in a sincere, and fruitful effort to support my successor when he undertakes this great responsibility as president of the greatest nation on earth. <laughs> Ours is a special country because our vast economic and military strength give us a special responsibility for seeking solutions to the problems that confront the world. But our influence will always be greater when we live up to those principles of freedom, of justice, of human rights for all people. God has been good to me, and God has been good to this country, and I'm truly thankful. I'm thankful for having been able to serve you in this capacity, thankful for the successes that we have had, Thankful that, to the end, you were with me in every good thing that I tried to do. There's an old Yiddish proverb that I've often thought of in the days and months that I've held this office. It says simply, God gives burdens, also shoulders. In all the days and months when I have served you and served this country, you've readily given me your shoulders, your faith, and your prayers. No man could ask any more of his friends. I've wanted to serve as president because I love this country and because I love the people of this nation. And we love you. Just come over. Come over. Finally, Finally, let me say that I am disappointed tonight, but I have not lost either love. Thank you very much. On this, the 49th time that the United States population has been to the presidential well, it has come up with Ronald Reagan as the next president of the United States. A, the oldest man ever to be elected to that job in his first term at 69 years old, and he breaks several other precedents as well. He will be the first former union president to occupy the White House, the first former sports announcer, the first former actor, and the first divorced man 
ever to be elected to the presidency. He also happens to be the first former governor of California elected to that job. The first man who has run on his first term from California uh, as a citizen of that state and the first who was born in Illinois. It is a sweeping landslide for uh, Governor Reagan tonight, a huge one, much bigger than anybody had even dared to predict. Even his most enthusiastic supporters did not think that it was going to look like this tonight. In the national vote now, with almost half the nation counted, 42% of it counted, he has 50% of the vote to 43% for Reagan, 6% for John Anderson, the independent, and uh, it will be noted that uh, Jimmy Carter has won so far uh, just these four states and the District of Columbia, Georgia, uh, West Virginia, Minnesota, and Rhode Island, and the District of Columbia. And all of those blue states are the ones won by Ronald Reagan tonight. That makes the total electoral count at this moment 279 for Ronald Reagan. 270 was all it took to win, and he gathered those in quite easily and neatly. Carter has just 35 electoral votes, and undoubtedly what he is hoping now is that he can at least beat Barry Goldwater's stunning defeat in 1964 when that Republican conservative uh, went down uh, to defeat by winning just six states but collected 52 electoral votes. Excuse me, sir. I think Governor Reagan's about to speak. Thanks very much. Thank you. You know, here we are. This is... You know, we're all here but one now, and he was here, but they just took him off stage. <laughs> it's past, it's way past his bedtime. But let me, let me just say first, let me just say first of all, this has been, well, there's never been a more humbling moment in my life. I would have been, not only humbled by the extent of what has happened tonight, even if it had been the cliffhanger that all of us, I think, uh, were expecting, it would have been the same way, but just to have had the support of the people of this country. I consider the trust that you have placed in me sacred, and I give you my sacred oath that I will do my utmost to justify your faith. <laughs> earlier, earlier this evening, I spoke on the phone with President Carter. He called, John Addison called, but the President pledged the utmost in cooperation in the transition that will take place in these coming months. I offered him my own cooperation. He graciously said that he wanted this to be the... Governor Reagan, we just wanted to show you what the map of the United States looks like as of 8 o'clock tonight. Hey! It's all yours. <laughs> Oh. 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 All right. When that, when that began to slide, I thought that maybe the world was going out just as I was getting in. But anyway, as I say, the president was most gracious about this. And now all across America, there are some people that I owe a great debt of thanks to. There they are, they're meeting tonight in our national headquarters in Arlington, Virginia. The National Committee people, the dedicated professionals who've made the campaign run, and in every state, in the counties, in the cities, and the precincts, to all of them who worked so tirelessly, literally hundreds of thousands of volunteers, and I've seen them at work throughout the country on this campaign. I just owe them an immeasurable debt of thanks. 
to George and Barbara Bush. Our running mates down in Texas, no one has worked harder than they have. We only crossed paths a few times on this campaign and had to go out of our way to do it because their schedule was so heavy. And I can tell you that we're going to have a true partnership and a true friendship in the White House. And now, as I said before, my family, I'm so grateful to them for the love, for the support, and for the hard work, because some of them were out on the campaign trail easily as much as Nancy and I were. And speaking of Nancy, she's going to have a new title in a couple of months. And it isn't really new because she's been the first lady in my life for a long time. Now, we'll share that a little bit in the future. You know, Abe Lincoln, the day after his election to the presidency, gathered in his office the newsmen who had been covering his campaign. And he said to them, well, boys, your troubles are over now. Mine have just begun. I think he know, I know what he meant. Lincoln may have been concerned in the troubled times in which he became president, but I don't think he was afraid. He was ready to confront the problems and the troubles of a still youthful country, determined to seize the historic opportunity to change things. And I am not frightened by what lies ahead, and I don't believe the American people are frightened by what lies ahead. Together, together, we're going to do what has to be done. We're going to put America back to work again. You know, there, I aim to try and tap that great American spirit that opened up this completely undeveloped continent from coast to coast and made it a great nation, survived several wars, survived a Great Depression, and will survive the problems that we face right now. When I, when I accepted your nomination for president, I hesitatingly, but I asked for your prayers at that moment. I won't ask them for this in particular moment, but I will just say I would be very happy to have them in the days ahead. Just, all I can say to all of you is thank you, and thank you for more than just George Bush and myself. Thank you because if the trend continues, we may very well control one house of the Congress for the first time in a quarter of a century. We have, we have already, we have picked up some governorships, and Bill Brock told me on the phone just a few minutes ago that it looks like in a number of states, we have turned the state legislatures around, and for the first time, they are majorities for us. So, you did it. I have one message that I have to give before I leave. I've been upstairs on the phone, 
trying to get a hold of two celebrations, two parties that are going on, one in Tampico, Illinois, where I was born, and one in Dixon, Illinois, where I grew up. I've got two hometowns. And finally, we managed to get the radio station in that area, and they told us that they were broad would broadcast my message into the two parties that are going on. So to all of them, thank you, too, back there in the hometown. Thank you all. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen,